High Treason by Sir John Lavery. It is a monumental painting, epic, three metres wide and two metres high. It hangs at the King's Inns in Dublin for the exclusive audience of Irish barristers and judges and their invited guests. It portrays the scene during three days of July 1916 in the Court of Criminal Appeal at the Royal Courts of Justice in London. In the dock is Sir Roger Casement, an honoured and respected knight of the realm, a man with an international reputation earned on humanitarian work as a consular official for the British Foreign Office working in Africa and on the Amazon. But he became an Irish revolutionary and now, convicted of high treason and facing sentence of death, he appeals to the five scarlet-robed judges for his very life. It is the most important and the most spectacular legal painting known to the law. It is more than a painting. It is a historical document, an archive of three days in July 1916, when the battle between the laws of England and dreams of Irish freedom was fought out in an English courtroom. Casement had been captured only three months previously on a County Kerry beach, with his feet still wet from the sea, on Good Friday the eve of the Easter Rising, after coming ashore from an Imperial German Navy submarine. While the Great War raged in Flanders and France, he had travelled to Germany to try and persuade British soldiers from the Irish regiments, now captured and held as prisoners of war in Germany, to forego their loyalty to the Crown and to come to Ireland to fight the English. He had met with the German High Command, he had negotiated a treaty with them for their assistance in the Irish Rising, and he had procured from them thousands of rifles and bombs for the cause. Now, in an English courtroom, in the middle of the raging war, one month after the Somme, he faced judges whose sons were fighting in the trenches, and counsel and jurymen with colleagues and friends dying in Flanders. There is in this canvas revolution, war, treachery, adventure on the high seas, intrigue, betrayal, patriotism, submarines and execution by hanging. There are two versions of the painting, this which I refer to as the King's Inns canvas and a much smaller version held by the Hugh Lane Gallery in Dublin, which was completed as a study for the great canvas now hanging in the King's Inns. On only one occasion in all their history have the two paintings ever been hung side by side. In 2016, as part of the 1916 centenary celebrations, the Hugh Lane Gallery brought the two paintings together in an outstanding and historically important exhibition. Here they are with the smaller study on the far wall. You can see them both as they were hung in the Hugh Lane Gallery during the centenary celebrations and compare their physical size and perhaps grasp the enormity of the epic King's Inn's canvas. This then is the study. It seems inadequate to call it a study, for it is a substantial painting in its own right. The perspective in both paintings is the same. We view the scene from the jury box. Indeed, Lavery was given permission to occupy the jury box with his box of paints to draw and sketch and record all that he saw before him. All the characters that will appear in the larger canvas are already included and are clearly identifiable with accurate individual portraits. The light from the high courtroom windows falls evenly across the scene, leaving it rather flat, without the gradations that would appear in the larger canvas. It includes a substantial portion of the public gallery, as well as the high windows, both of which are missing in the King's canvas, which is a pity, for there sits in the public gallery a lady with a wide-brimmed hat, typical of the hats worn by the artist's wife, Lady Hazel Lavery. Could it possibly be her?
Let us compare the study with the larger canvas. Immediately we see that the high windows have gone, as has most of the public gallery. The light still illuminates the scene, but now a great shaft of light falls from the unseen windows across the wood panelling and bathes the prisoner in the dock in the warmth of its energy and luminescence. The gradations of light and of colour are much more obvious in the greater canvas and are splendid. I suggest the artist has achieved two focuses of attention. The first is an interior focus whereby, as you can see, all eyes in the court are drawn towards the presiding judge, Judge Darling. There he sits, in noble and handsome profile, straight-backed, in charge of and dominating his court. It was he who commissioned Lavery to paint the scene, and who gave him the run of the jury box for the three days of the appeal. One must always please one's sponsors. The second point of focus, and by far the more important one, is the prisoner Roger Casement much more so in the King's Inn's canvas than in the study. The study is the painting that was seen by W.B. Yeats, who mentioned it in his poem, The Municipal Gallery Revisited. He penned the following line of it, Casement, on trial, half hidden by the bars. And in the study he does indeed look rather hidden behind the bars, but in the King's Inn's canvas, Bathed in the shaft of light from the unseen windows, he is far from hiding and becomes instead the central focus of the painting to which all of us, outside the painting and not in the court, are drawn. I suggest that this is a reflection of Lavery's growing empathy with the Irish cause. He worked on this painting on and off for the next 14 years and it was not completed until the 1930s. During those years, Sir John Lavery, a member of the British imperial artistic elite, had become en enchanted with and embroiled in the Irish cause. He had already completed portraits of all the British and Irish leaders that negotiated the 1922 treaty. And a portrait of his wife Hazel as Kathleen Nihulihan now adorned the banknotes of the new Irish nation. In 1922, he painted the blessing of the colours of the now free island and a famous painting of Michael Collins at rest in his coffin. Lavery was himself Irish, born in Belfast into a Catholic family, and although he was by this time part of the British imperial artistic elite, he was always an Irishman. And so he portrays Casement in the King's Inn's canvas as a far more prominent point of focus than what he achieved in the study. The painting belongs not to the King's Inn's, but to the British. It forms part of the British Government art collection and is on permanent loan to the King's Inn's. It was, I suggest, conceived by Judge Darling as a tribute to the glories of the English law and as a large-scale enduring record of his great place in the English law, presiding, as he is, in one of the most important state trials of the century. But if that was the intention, then it has failed. It has become instead a tribute to a great Irish rebel and a hero. It is a historical document of priceless importance, both to Ireland and to England. If you'd like to know more about the background to this painting and to some of the characters who appear in the painting, then click on the link set out below or enter into your search engine the words High Treason Broadsides. That should take you to a heavily illustrated explanation of who's who in the painting.